I will say I'm not recording my video today because I, I'm in my, my bedroom, which is barely a bedroom, and yeah. there is not even an office to speak of. So there, <laughs> there okay. will be a video so, later. So so we don't get to see you. I can, no. I can see you. You can see me. You're... The pub, you're not going to let the public see you. No, there, there, there is because, nothing to show yet. Well, I, I disagree. I think you're a beautiful, beautiful human. I, I, if you say so. Welcome back to Talking Story. My name is John Minton, and that is the beautiful dulcet tones you hear of Jacob Minton. Yes, because he's, again, he's at our Talking Story studio, Annex Northeast all the way over there, but we are still putting this together. We're still coming through you, and I couldn't be more excited that we are back with Weekly Reader. Uh, we had a week of like live streams. We haven't uh, put a video out. This I feels know. great. It, it was a busy week. We had to oh. not do editing the whole week. Let me tell you something. You treated your dad like a pack mule all week. Uh, are you feeling okay? Like literally up and down the mountain, like a uh, pack mule. I'm a little concerned. I'm not sure what is it with you and your lovely fiance Amanda that makes you want to live stories off the ground. Both of you, stories off the ground. Hey, we're only on the second floor. It's, it's well, you make it sound like we're in a penthouse. That let me tell you, I feel every every one of those steps. Yeah, I, I do too. But it was it was great. It was a good time. I'm glad you guys are getting settled in. So, um, and welcome everyone back. Uh, I'm so excited to be back. Uh, with Weekly Reader and grab a frosty beverage, settle in, get ready. We're going to talk some books. We're going to hang out. We're going to have a great time. Uh, and we're going to heal up from all the moving we did this week. Yeah, we'll, we'll try our best. So, <laughs> so we're going to look, we're going to rub some liniment on us. We're going to get some Icy Hot, some Tiger Balm, some Old Man Magic. We're going to rub that all over it. We're going to get into some reading, which is what life is all about. And uh, I, I hope you guys had a great week. I hope you did not have to move people up and down stairs. I hope you had five-star <laughs> reads. Uh, we're going to get into... I, I looked over what I did this week, what I read this week, even though I moved you. It's pretty impressive. Well, you read a lot. I think, I think you're going to be... Let's just start off with what you got read. Nothing. Absolutely not. <laughs> the same as every week. <laughs> you could have you could have squeezed something in. I don't know. Some usually, you, yeah, you're right. I I could have. There's no excuse. This week, I don't think so. I don't think I could. Yeah, I'll I'll go with you. Let's let's just start with what I wrapped up. All right. What'd you do this week? I finished book two in the Bound of the Broken. That is darkness and light. Um, I just I really liked this. I thought. The beginning didn't, I don't, I was a little nervous in the beginning because it picks up right on the heels of book one. Um, and it's just, oh, it's all pace, 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 pace. There's no slowdown to get deeper into these characters' uh, lives and heads. And I kind of really wanted to have that for book two. I wanted to get more and more involved with them as people so I could start to really have a connection and feel uh, something as all this starts coming down the pipe. But I would say uh, after the first... Maybe third of the book, it did take some breaths. It did allow me to stop and slow down a little bit, and I did get that feeling of going deeper into uh, Kalen and Wrist. And oh gosh, the POVs just keep stacking up. Like there's more and more and more. Now we got Dane, and we got a lot more of Ella, and we got. I can absolutely see uh, why everyone loves this series, or most people love this series. But no series is for everyone, of course. But these characters will absolutely suck you in. Now, Ryan K. Cahill, absolutely just a natural-born storyteller. Where he's going to end up on his artist journey, be done with his craft, I'm not sure. But where he is right now, it's that guy just, just by a campfire that has you sit down and get comfortable, put your weenie on a stick, start roasting up a marshmallow or something, and he just starts hitting you with a story, and you will stay there until the sun comes up because you're just riveted. You have to see what happens next. Um, there, there's there's a lot of familiar things from other fantasy series, but he absolutely puts his own top spin on this. And by the end of this book, I find myself completely immersed and all in on, I'm going to say, all these characters' journey. Like, even when he adds new arcs and new point-of-view characters and new voices, um, what's going on with them is 
just enough to make you have to know what happens next. There's never a POV that I go, oh, we gotta check in with this person, right? Like it's always somebody you wanna see the next step of what's coming up next. And as the world expands, I get sucked in more. I love the Dane character and I love opening up the world to find that this is not the first uprising civil war type feel uh, of this last 400 years when one empire crumbled as another ascended. Like there's been sparks, but it's been able to be quashed down. What is different this time uh, is, is, is this character Kalen and, and the dragon that he's dragging around behind him, uh, which is, look, if you like Dragon Rider fantasy, if you like character driven fantasy, um, I mean, I don't believe this is like Realm of the Elderlings le level. I just think it's far more plot, far more foot on the accelerator, but the characters will suck you in when I say character driven. You will have to know what comes next with them. Um, and there's some, some moments that um, surprise you, actually, as you get further and deeper into the book about where they're going. Um, so they all have a huge arc to travel. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying the world. Where he'll end up as a craftsman, I can't wait to see. Uh, he's already just such an amazing natural storyteller, and I think he's only gonna get better as we go along. We, I still have a little bit of the repetition. I still think that's the pace at which he works possibly. Uh, I still get a bit of repetition. But, but I mean, these are nitpicky things. For somebody's second book, um, creating this big, huge series in this amazing world that he's gonna be able to have a sandbox to play in for years and years and years to come. Uh, I mean, just, I think I think it's top notch. I have a great time. I have a great time here. Has anyone told you that like it gets, the repetition gets better as the books go on or? I I, I haven't heard that. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm interested to see, and maybe I, you know, I, I could be odd man out of, of, of this niggling nitpick I have. Oh, sure. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just a me thing. So when I put this down, hey, it was time for our Cosmere catch-up. So, it, you know, after last month doing Oathbringer, we took it easy on ourselves. Very it's a easy. much smaller, much smaller package, much smaller package, uh, Dawn Shard. Quote-unquote novella. A quote unquote 300 page novella, but you know, it's small. I think that's why they get away <laughs> with saying that. Uh, I think it's like, I don't know, 40, 50,000 more. It's a novel. It's a, it's a, it's a novel. novel. Yeah. Um, but this happens in the world of Roshar, so I kind of just got to stay with the Stormlight Archives. And this kind of, wow, some side characters, uh, Ryzen and Cord and, um, it's just, I mean, it's more and more and more. I can't even name them all. That They get their moment in the sun. Lopin, oh, Lopin especially. They, 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 they get their moment to step up. Uh, and they get their moment in the sun. They get their chance to shine. And I thought they absolutely did. Um, I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed it. And as opposed to, like, some of the other smaller things in, in the Stormlight Archive, like... Um, uh, edge dancer, things like that. I thought this was, I think this is very consequential. I don't, I would absolutely say, don't miss this. Don't miss it because there's by, by the end of this, it feels like, wow, this is, this is hugely important. I would think, I would think the character of rising going forward is going to be enormously important. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but I just thought this gave me such a quick hit of things. I love about the stormlight archive. It gave me such an opportunity to see some side characters shine that I don't normally get to see shine as they're kind of in the shadow of Kaladin or Shallan or Dalinar or Navani. Um, so um, I, I really had a great time with this. I really loved it. I, I'm, I, it's, one of, it's one of my more favorite short pieces, I think, that, I, that I've done kind of in the Cosmere catch-up. So, really? And I love the kind of way that you get, again, you get these ripples or these reflections from the Cosmere at large. I see some uh, Tress of the Emerald Sea in this. I see, I just see as things, it's kind of like that never ending story. As things happen on one world, you can kind of see a mirror and happen on another as these, as these things just in a circular fashion come around again and again. Uh, and I, I just, I, there's so much about this Cosmere that I, I, I'm just really enjoying my time in it. 
And this, I would say, is one of my favorite shorter Stormlight Archive pieces that I've, that I've done. Well, you pretty much got Rhythm of War and then a few of the secret projects and then you're done, right? That's it. Oh, uh, Lost Metal, the last of Era 2. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm coming in on a landing. Hey, you took a break from Era 2 to do some other stuff. Uh, I did. I took a break from Era 2 because that's the way my reading list went. I it was take a break from Era 2 but, and oh. then come back for the end after Oathbringer. Interesting. Okay. So I think there was, whoever put my list together, I think it, you know, there was a... Well, you did. There was an... Yeah, yeah, there's an absolute reason for that. Oh, I did want to say this, wrapping this up, this is for the buddy read coming up. Uh, so early in August, you're going to have me, uh, Dr. Chase from The Best of Fantasy, Mike, Mike's book reviews, Christopher Navo, next chapter. Uh, shout out for Angela de Unicorns Read. I think she's got some things going on in her life. She won't be joining us, but, um, you know, we, we look forward to having a huge discussion about this right here on our channel uh early in august so well, don't miss that we we will link everyone down below including uh do unicorns read so if yeah, you haven't absolutely. go subscribe to everyone down below absolutely uh and then after that i kind of wanted to stick with just some short things in between my kid treating me like a beast of burden and carrying things up and downstairs you can so handle i kind of uh, yeah i'm i'm strong i'm 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 virile right i mean i don't know if i'd go that far but <laughs> Okay, so uh, I had not come back to this, uh, Stephen King's new collection, You Like It Darker, because the story I got up to, uh, Danny Coughlin's Bad Dream, I think it's called. I think that's it. Danny Coughlin's Bad Dream. I don't think it's Nightmare. Let me see. Let me just see. Oh, I missed it again. So let's... Oh, man, you didn't come prepared. Uh, you know what? I did not. Look at this. You, you're getting caught. Danny Coughlin's Bad Dream. Okay. And it's a little over 200 pages long. It's like a good chunk of the book. It's like a novella or something. So I, I, it's like I didn't have time to wedge it in here or there as a palate cleanser between anything. Uh, so I kind of thought, you know, with the changing up of the TBR, I want to come back to this. I want to get a little bit further in this. Now I'm right, close to halfway, I would say. Um, so Danny Coughlin's Bad Dream. Wow. I, th you, this is turning out to a really good collection. Uh, I know people think, oh my gosh, he's been doing this for so many years. He's been cranking out so many tales, one after another, after another, after another. Uh, is, is he losing a step? Is he slowing down a little bit? Is he becoming more of a crime writer as he's as he you know wraps up his career? Uh, and this kind of is a crime story, actually. It's got a little bit of a supernatural touch to it, but ah, uh, just just what a page turn! It's like I think it's close to half the book here. It's two hundred and something pages, and I still just it was like this. I, I, I read it so fast, you can't stop reading. Um, the personalities in it, especially Danny Coughlin, that just tries to do a good deed, uh, spurred on by this hideous dream uh, vision he has one night, tries to do the right thing, and then he is just thrown into this blender of consequence uh, as these people uh, try to solve this crime that he dreamed of. Uh, and it's, wow, I just... The characters in it, especially Danny and uh, the two investigators, one of which is a little suffering from a little bit. I don't want to go too much. I don't want to do any spoilers because it, it's a short tale. So even if you give a little glimmer away, it might be too much, you know. So um, the investigators dealing with his own uh, problems in his own way. Oh, the way he gets fixated or obsessed and the way he it's just you just cannot stop turning pages. This guy is just gifted. They're storytellers that I think are just, somehow they just know what makes us tick. They just understand our pulse. They just understand story. They just, it's like they can, they're like a chiropractor of story. They can just tap that needle right underneath you and hit that that energy flow and just make you just shock you and make you just keep turning pages. And that's that's how he operates. That's the level that Stephen King operates on with this type of story. I don't think he's lost a step. Uh, you like it darker. He has come back to the dark stuff. I'm so enjoying this uh, collection. Uh, it may be one of my favorite books that has come out this year. And I've got another half left to go. So unless it just completely falls apart, um, I, this could be one of my favorite that has been published this year. The Chiropractor of Story. You like that? <laughs> That's good. 
<laughs> favorite book I mean, this so year true. is huge, though. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm saying that's printed this year. I'm not saying it's my overall favorite. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm saying of the new releases that came out in 2024, this collection is kind of everything I was hoping it would be. I'm not even saying it's his one of his best collections because he's had so many and he's had such amazing collections. Right. Uh, but I'm just, this is everything I was hoping it would be when he kind of got back to his darker roots. And he's really, for me, absolutely nailing it here. Um, and then after that, I started my first Adrian Tchaikovsky uh, service model. And I look, I've heard some mixed things about this. Really? I'm, I am just, I'm digging this. Like I'm only, I think two chapters in, like I'm only 25 pages in. Um, but the take on this, I truly love the, uh, the, 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 this service model, this gentleman's gentleman robot, this valet of the master, uh, that just has these subroutines that get mixed up because the master doesn't care to handle him with enough care to give him specific commands that they, he just gets so gummed up and he's trying to get through his day uh, one day after another bleeding into 2,000 plus days somewhat being like the same. Uh, and it just, and this, I, no spoilers, this is like chapter one. He's going through his things of laying his master's clothes out or cleaning up the car. He may want to travel even though he hadn't traveled in over 2,000 days. These are just his subroutines that he has to do. And he starts to realize, oh, there's something on this upholstery that I can't clean. There's something on these clothes I can't clean. There's something on his tea mug that I, th this is an odd viscous, uh, I what, I'm, I'm not quite, I, I'm, I'm not programmed to understand what quite is going, I'm not sure where this is coming from. And it's, oh, it's coming from me. This is all over me. And then he realizes he misjudged by an inch getting his master a close shave and killed him this morning. So everything is thrown into chaos at this point, as far as his subroutines go. Uh, and, and to watch him try to become uh, self-aware enough to, to, to handle these next steps, I find it just completely fascinating. Uh, I, I'm really liking the style of it. I'm really liking the start of it. I, I, for me, it's absolutely working. It's just, I know it's an old trope, uh, but it's just, it's got just enough topspin in the style uh, that I'm truly enjoying it. I, I, I predict I'm gonna blow through this really quickly. Man, you like just started it too. Yeah, I, I, I'm telling. I'm on chapter three. Oh wow! So, so I just started it last night after I came home. Is it, this is when? Do you pick it for yourself? This one? I can't remember. Yeah, I, I just really wanted to get into Adrian Tchaikovsky, and this is one that just came out, so it doesn't start a series, and it's relatively shorter than some of his other things. Uh, so I thought, oh, I can maybe just, since I changed up my TBR this month, I can maybe just wedge it in and get a taste of Tchaikovsky and see what I think. And uh, I, you know, I I just truly love the mechanical voice he's working with from this perspective of this uh, uh, poor, way way out of his depth service model that is telling this story. So uh, I predict I'm gonna blow through that really quickly this week, which means I will have time to get back to Dan Wells and book two this week. Um, and I can't wait because I enjoyed book one. Josh. Hey, big, big supporter, big friend of the channel. Josh sent me book one and I had such a good time with it. He had book two in the mail like the next day when I talked about it. Uh, so I cannot wait to get back to uh, uh, to this story because, you know, I was really enamored with the kid here, uh, John Wayne Cleaver, that has some rules set out for himself so he does not slip into being a serial killer because he knows that danger is there for him. Uh, and it turns out, that danger makes him the perfect person to solve a crime that, that drops into his lap, drops into his life. Uh, so I absolutely, I want to get, and I've heard book two is even better. So Dan Wells coming back, book two, Mr. Monster. Can't wait to see what John Wayne Cleaver is up to uh, after whew, everything he went through in book one. So this should wrap up the week and then we'll be right back here for Weekly Reader. I hope everyone else is having as great a reading time as I have had. I've been hitting like pretty much really enjoyable read after really enjoyable read all through the week. So I think I got some good reading done, even though um, we were we were moving all week. You got quite a bit done. Yeah. And it seems like yeah, all good so stuff I, too. 
It, you, it, look, I'm telling you, man, BookTube is the way to go because you you hear about such amazing things, you get such amazing recommendations, and, and we don't have to make our own decisions anymore. That's that's the that's the big part about it. And reading this many books, I kind of want to hit this. Now, look, this is not, this is, they aren't, uh, what do you call it? I don't even know the word, uh, backing or, or I don't know sponsoring, about. sponsoring. They're not, uh, they, they're not sponsoring this. I just want to put this out there. Um, when you're picking up this many books, I started looking into uh, several different clubs. Like every store has their member ship club, you pay this much a year, you get kind of these kind of discounts or these kind of frills or things. And I was like, man, I really need to get in on this, buying this many books or reading this many books as I've started to do uh, joining BookTube. Uh, and I've kind of found, I think the one I really like and I and I kind of stepped up for and I want to let everyone know about is uh, Tertulia. It's like, it's an online but indie bookstore. It's an indie bookstore online and the membership is only 25 bucks a year. So it's not a huge layout, which some of these other ones were kind of really high. Uh, so this one is only 25 bucks a year. And when you do that, every book you purchase, you get 10% off and free shipping. Every book you purchase for a year. And here's the kicker. And this was what made such an easy decision for me. It's like, as soon as you spend 150 bucks, which I mean, if you're reading this much, you can spend that pretty quickly you get 20% off for the rest of the year and free shipping. And they treat it like a co-op. They treat it like, hey, you are now a co-op member of the store and you will have a say in how we do business and what we carry. We will start sending you uh, voting so you can vote about how this company moves forward and how it grows and what it carries. So you actually get a say in how the store operates. Um, so I, I kind of looked into all the different stores. I kind of felt like this one was the one for me. I kind of like supporting an indie bookstore and they do carry some indie stuff as well. Uh, so check out Tertulia. I'm gonna, but we're gonna drop a link down there. Uh, if you if you're interested at all, if you're picking up a lot of books and you've thought about, man, you know, I'm this store down the street, that store around the corner, like maybe I want to join that club. Uh, check this one out. I, I think I think for the bang for the buck, it's pretty good, and um, I like the idea of them running it like a co-op and you get a say in how they do business. So hit the link if you're interested at all. And uh, if you're going through a lot of books like we are here, I kind of want to let you guys know the research I did and what I found on that. Uh, and if you just want to pick up a book from Tertulia, uh, they did let me know that my uh, John fans code uh, is going to be good through the end of the month. So if you want to pick something up and you want 20% off, just put that in your cart before you sh uh, check out and it should get you 20% off. Man, I didn't know that and about the co-op. Yeah, the co-op thing is really cool. And also, like when you pay that $25 and join, your first book that you buy after that is 50% off. Oh, that's cool. So you start it, you get half off your first book, 10% off of every book after that, free shipping. As soon as you spent up to 150, 20% off after that. I, I For me, it was like, it, it just made perfect sense to me. Yeah. So I just I, I wanted to throw that out there for everyone because it's I, I spent some time on the interwebs, which is unusual for me, and uh, did some research. So I wanted to throw that out there. So hey, last week on the channel, do you remember what we did? I remember exactly what we did. Do you? Because we you did very little. You did way less than normal. Well, uh, close to nothing. Yeah, that's I'm shocked you remember. And yet it was still stressful. <laughs> Not because of us. <laughs> no. Not because of we here on BookTube. No. Well, well, Tuesday, what did you get up to? I wasn't involved in that at all. Oh, Tuesday. Okay. We did basically we did two live streams this week. Because that took the weight of editing off of the young boy child here as he moves to Talking Story Studio Annex Northeast. And we Tuesday we had a live stream with Laura from Fantasy Awash. And uh, Kyle from Red by Kyle, and Chris from Unlimited Reads, and myself, and we all just talked about Oathbringer because Chris and I had just buddy read it, and we wanted to talk about it. And Laura, we had we had uh, tapped her on the shoulder to be our Sherpa because she went through the whole Cosmere last year, and then Kyle heard about it and said, "Hey, I just want to join in because I love the Cosmere that much." So we, you know, we had like an extra Sherpa on board, and he was so awesome. I hadn't met him before, so now everything we do Cosmere related, I gotta have Kyle with me. 
Not only do I got to have Kyle with me here on the channel, we're going to meet him at Dragonsteel. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, he says he's going. So we absolutely are going to have one of our Sherpas there. Laura's not going to go there, but we'll have Kyle to, to lead us through. Oh, man. Kyle, Kyle's going to have to tell not only you, but definitely me what everything means. Oh, he might have to give you cliff notes. He might have to, like, write things on your hand. Uh, he'll, he'll have to give me something. I'll, I'll need some yeah. cheat codes. Yo, you're, you're gonna, yeah, you you have not. I didn't ask. You're still on Mistborn. I didn't ask. Did the did the Sherpas help, by the way? Was there stuff you were missing? Oh, my, absolutely. Oh, my gosh. So much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we started non-spoiler, and then we got into not only spoilers with Oathbringer, but, I mean, we got into spoilers on, of course, Stormlight Archives, because this was book three, uh, but also Mistborn and how everything ties together, and it's like, it was it was such a fun hangout and such a great conversation, uh, and we just, I just had a great time, and um, that is what we did Tuesday, and then Thursday, we did something I hope to never do again. <laughs> I thought you had fun. I let me tell you, I had to I had to go downstairs and uh, not only wipe the sweat off my brow, but but wipe some nether region. It was I was seriously puckered for two hours. You talking like, about yourself? It was yourself. very stress. It was very stressful. I was stressed. Yeah, I, I thought I was going to have fun sitting back laughing. We you played Elden Ring, by the way. If people haven't caught on, we, yeah, that this is what we did. We streamed. Uh, you and I started playing games together when you were what seven or so, Something and we like wanted that. to have one more gaming session together before you left the house. Uh, so we just invited everyone to, uh, to hang out with us while we did that. So we streamed us playing Elden Ring and here's the downfall of it. I had the controller in my hand. That's what made it, that's what made it not great. Um, but look, I, we laughed, we had a good time and everybody hanging out was amazing. They made it, they made it fun. They did. But I, that, I am never playing that game again. I think you should. No, no. I, I, honestly, I, I think you should and here's why. You got I felt, so much look, further than I thought you would. I felt so good picking up a book after that. Like, <laughs> it's like the rest of the week reading, I felt like, oh, this is a comfy chair. This is where, <laughs> this is this is the speed of life that I need to be moving at now. Uh, yeah. I, I think you got to pick the controller back up. No. I, I look. You took the controller, so you, you, got you took the, PC. the PS5. You got the PC. We can make it happen. I could, I could. I would have to. I would have to get a controller. And I just. I look. It's not going to happen. <laughs> that. I think that was my last hurrah. That was my last hurrah. Well, for anyone in the comments that was asking if we'll do another one, it sounds like not. <laughs> <laughs> I well, you know. Okay, never say never. If you guys want, you know. I look. I was shocked by so many people that came and hang out with us. Uh, if you guys, if we want to do something again, but it won't be that game. It will not be that game. I'm sure we could find like a two-player game you and I can do. That'd be a fun time. I mean, if we could do something together that I could just stand behind you and yeah. watch the the majesty that is your gaming potential. Maybe we could. I don't know if this is a trendy thing to do anymore, but maybe we can do like a Jackbox party so that like viewers can join in and stuff. That'd be fun. Yeah, I mean, yeah that'd be great. Hit us up. Let us know in comments what you think of that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, you're hitting us up in comments. We, we got to recognize some people that do more than... They do more than just comment. They do that as well. Uh, but, you know, everyone is so important to us here. But we do have to recognize these amazing humans right here who were part of hanging out with us when we gamed and part of everything. They help us make decisions. They help us uh, keep the lights on. They help us do everything. Uh, they are our fine uh, patrons on Patreon. And one of the main things they do that they were been doing all week long while we were moving is, uh, you know, Right here, they got the uh, they they got uh, more voting done on the bracket. There's a, there's a lot of voting to get done this month. There's a lot of voting to get done, and there's a lot of amazing choices. Some are runaways. Some are really close. Like some are really tight. I have noticed more comments this time saying, "Oh, this one's tough." Yeah, yeah. There's some votings, and, and people are piping up like, "Oh, maybe we should think of a maybe a little different way to do this or something." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're putting our brain caps on. We'll try and figure some things out maybe. But it's like that bracket is, is getting filled in so much so that a week from today, we are going to be here on the Weekly Reader and we're going to have the auspicious Mr. Pooh, who is the judge of all things fair and equitable, 
making sure no shenanigans happen while we choose the Patreon read for August. There's that will happen a week from today. Nothing trustworthy about that dog. Yeah. No, he, he's, I'm telling you, he's very, he's the, uh, he's the icon of trustworthiness. So, I mean, the, these are people, they're making these decisions, they're doing these votes, uh, they're doing everything all the way up to taking over this channel uh, and getting their content on this channel. If you are able or if you are interested at all, hit the Patreon link down there and you can learn all about it if it interests you at all. Um, other than that, we've got some huge stuff coming up next week. Next week is gonna be busy, very busy, huge. We are not sitting back from moving. See, now I've forgotten what com what comes next. I have no idea. Oh, you, you, well, let me remind you, Please because do. this is going to this is absolutely going to impact you in ways that I don't think you're remembering. Oh no. Uh oh. What did yeah. yeah. I forget? Okay. So Tuesday, we're going to get our August TBR out there. I want to get it out there a little bit early. We got a couple buddy reads. Uh, we got book book club with the misses coming. Uh, we got some other buddy reads people may want to join in, and I want to give everyone complete uh, uh, amount of time, good amount of time to pick up a book if they need to. Um, so we're doing the August TBR on Tuesday. Then on Thursday, it's Town Square. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah, it's Town Square. That is when we turn the camera around and see what you guys have been reading, what you're up to, what you're recommending, uh, how you can blow up our TBRs. Uh, so that... I think you're gonna be here for right. I, I think so. I'll, I'll have to. You, I think I'll have I to figure my schedule out, but I think I have to be. So <laughs> I think you have to be. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure something out. <laughs> so uh, that's what I was saying. I think you forgot. I definitely so I forgot. Think, yeah. So we're gonna have to. We're, we'll have to put some thought into. Maybe we'll make you guys a nice dinner or something. Or we'll figure something out. Yeah. Well. Well. If there's free food, I'll be there. Yeah. There you go. So, and then that's not it for the week. It's not? No, oh. that is not it for the week. Saturday, we have our Talking with Tubers uh, because we're going to be hanging out and talking with Jonathan from Words in Time. Uh, he's an amazing YouTuber. I mean, he's, you know, everyone knows Jonathan. He's got everything all sci-fi wrapped up in one little neat package that is his channel. Uh, and we're gonna be hanging out, letting him blow up our TBR, letting us know all the sci-fi that we're missing and should be getting in on. Exciting. So that'll be a great fun live stream Saturday evening with Jonathan uh, from Words in Time. So yeah, d d this week is, it's pretty packed. I love it. It is so packed, you won't have time to unpack. That's how packed it is. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, well, no, we'll forget about it. We'll be here it. next time again, and I'll have no camera because there will be no studio. <laughs> that you've got to get that set up. I'll, I'll, I, I'm hoping to today. We'll see. Yeah, no, no, that's not going to happen. We'll see. We'll see. All right, we'll see. We'll 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 cross our fingers and find out. Hey, that kind of wraps it up for us, except for what I've been watching, and I actually not only get some stuff read, I actually watch some stuff on the tube, man. I can't believe that. I can't. I look. I'm. It's almost like I cloned myself. It feels like it. It, it it's almost like I overperformed. Like this. This could be state of the art, John. This week. Could be state of the art, John, on BookTube. I don't, I don't, I this, I'm, I, I. It's all downhill. The thing all that shocks me the most is that after everything you've done this week, you still come on here looking like you've done a line. Like you, you have so much energy. You've got to, you got to stop with those references. It, it, I, it's just concerning to me. That's, that's, you, you, you're not doing, you're not doing our image any good. I mean, your image. I, I got nothing to do with it. <laughs> Yeah, no, you sound like you just you just got up from an eight-hour sleep on cold medicine. Uh, you know, I don't know how neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> so, look, this week I actually watched the new Axel F movie on Netflix. And? Ah, uh, I wanted some nostalgia. Let me tell you, it's not good. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not good. I didn't, I didn't have... I did not have a good time. It's fun to see everybody again, but you can tell, look, you can tell in the edit, watch this movie and tell me at any time, does anyone say anything longer than a line before a cut? I'm talking about a sentence. People get a sentence out and there's a cut to someone else or some other, like no actor had any chance to back up and get a running start or a, or a attack on any scene whatsoever. Everybody does like a line at a time. It's almost like, okay, uh, 
Okay, Mr. Uh, Billy Rosewood, here's your line, say this. Roll camera, say the line. Okay, now, here's, and it just, they, I just, it, it didn't feel, it just felt cut together and choppy and not as a whole. It felt like no actor could sink their teeth into anything because it was just so chopped up and put together. I, I, I just, I just, I, yeah, I, I, did, I didn't like it. I didn't have a great time. Man, I it was walked, fun seeing everyone. I walked in on you watching that movie, like the first few minutes, and I, I was like, is it good? And you were like, I don't know. People say it's pretty good. Yeah. That, that, that didn't turn out. I'm not people. <laughs> I, I got I got I'm got to, I got to swim upstream on this one. Let me tell you what completely satisfied me on every level, every step of the way was the finale of the boys. Like, how can something be so over the top, gross, disgusting, depraved, and at the same time have such a good heart at its center? Like, it's 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 a magic trick, and I thought they pulled it off, and I really enjoyed it. And I oh my gosh, did they set up for the next season? I cannot wait. Uh, it was look, the season was so satisfying to me overall. I had a great time with it. Um, trigger warnings for everyone in every sense of the word on every level with this show. Oh my God, is it a lot to deal with? It, it, I mean, it's just they they purposefully make it that way. But if you want to dip your toe in and take a shot at it, um, I, th- I, I think it's, I have a good time with it. I, still I was completely satisfied on that. And then if the, as if that's not enough, I watched the first couple episodes of Star Trek Prodigy on Netflix because they have the new season there. Uh, and look, I, this is one of the best Trek shows I've seen in a while. I'm really enjoying it. Lower Decks and Prodigy, the animated outings uh, from Star Trek lately have just been, for me, top notch. I've really enjoyed them. Prodigy has a great start. I'm all in. It's got its its roots sunk so deep into Trek lore and history. Uh, if you're if you're a Trek fan and you, and you haven't tried these because they're animated, ah, uh, give them a shot, man. They're so much fun. Uh, and I started that. And because I didn't get that nostalgia juice that I wanted from Axel F, the next thing I'm dialing up now that I finished the boys is going to be Cobra Kai because the new season, the the beginning of the new season came out, the last season of Cobra Kai. And uh, look. That's going to give me every bit of nostalgia tingles that I can ima- that I can imagine. Cobra Kai's been good. I, I think I only watched yeah. the first few seasons, but I so heard that, it keeps uh, up. So, so that's it, man. That's our, that's our week. That's a big week. I can't believe you did all that. And still went to work. <laughs> <laughs> and still find, found enough time to eat enough food to where I didn't die. Like the, the I could go, the list could go on. Like I, I accomplished so much more than this. Well, eating enough like food I, to I, not die. I, I hope you do that no matter what. I'm pretty sure I went to the bathroom a time or two. Like I, if you really want the list, I don't. I, it would just humble you. <laughs> it would basically humble. Like. Here's the main thing, though. Everybody out there, let me know your list. Let me know what you got up to this week. Let me know what you were reading. Uh, We started this channel because we love comments. I love talking to people that love the books that I love, love reading like I love reading. Love story the way I love story. Uh, You're so important to us. If you just leave us a comment down there, I will answer a comment as quickly as humanly possible. If I'm not going up and downstairs moving my kid, I answer comments right away. And while you're down there, that little thumbs up button, hey, hit that for us. That helps us grow, helps us find new people to hang out with, uh, helps everything here on YouTube. And while you're down there, if this is like your first time checking us out or a time or two and you haven't quite done this one step yet, hey, maybe, you know, this is absolutely every bit as important supporting us on every level. This level is just so important. Hit that subscribe button. Like this means so much to us and it takes no time. It's it's no sweat off of your back to go and hit that button and get it over with and you feel good. It feels good. If you say so. I subscribed to someone, my back was killing me for moving. I subscribed to a new person it cured my back. Wow. I felt great. Subscribing yeah. will fix your back pain. You heard it here for the first. I, I, it did me for the first time. I was walking straight. I was kind of hunched over. I was kind of impa- boop. Oh, I like life again. I have new <laughs> readers to hang out with. It felt great. So, hey, uh, so many ways to be friends of the channel, support us and help out. 
Uh, and we hope you will take us up on any number of those. They're all equally as just important to us. Uh, and we can't thank you enough for, for this journey that you've taken with us, this reading journey that we're taking together. And it's so much fun. And I got to thank you for taking time out. What did I do? From putting your office together. Man, I, I it's not taking time out from putting it together. I just haven't done any of it yet. <laughs> I haven't even started. Well, I mean, you got, you, hopefully you, you did something. No, I got out of bed, I ate some donuts, and here we are. That's been my day. <laughs> See, this is, this is the flip side of accomplishing a lot of things. Uh, I, I beg to differ. Well, you did have donuts. I, I ate those donuts and felt pretty good. Yeah. Did you, did you get a tingle? I, I did. Okay. I did. Well, there you go. Donuts. That's the way to go. Um, thank you so much for everything. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for commenting. Uh, it, it means the world to us. My name is John Mitten. That is... I, oh, man. I'm not prepared. I'm too tired. J uh, John Minton. I'll go with you. <laughs> you know what? I'll give you that. Thank you. <laughs> you're so close. Genetically, you're so close. You can just, just, you can just claim that. And yet, I do not read as much. No, but you do other things far better. So, hey, thanks so much for joining us. My name is John Minton. That is Jacob Minton uh, in our Talking Story Annex Northeast studio. Uh, and this has been Talking Story. Talking Story.